Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan, back with another video for you. And I'm here to show you the Cooler Master Half 500. It's $139.99 in the UK, or 140 of your best British beer tokens. And, I mean, with the two fans on the front, it's very half. There's a, a styling thing going on there. But it has done quite well. And then there are certain aspects about it that are actually quite limiting. And I think that they could have spent a bit more time refining things and most definitely testing them as well. So I've got stuff to moan about straight from the get-go and I knew I would anyway. So it's going to be up to you whether you want to listen to me moan or not. So, we always start at the front and the top, but at the top, in reality, it's two USBs, uh, a USB-C, and then the uh, power switch, which is just here. And there is on the roof a magnetic mesh panel, which is gray. I'm going to call this Corsair gray, and the front is Corsair gray too. And the reason why I'm calling it Corsair gray is because Corsair kind of did it first. I mean, I'm just walking away, and I'm grabbing a Corsair grey panel, that is off of a Corsair case. It's Corsair grey. Anyway, on the roof, you do get an offset mounting for radiators in the roof, up to 360 millimetres. Now you can see that this outside one is 120 millimetre mounts, and this is 140 millimetre mounts, and you can see they're all offset. This is all good news. In the front, to 100, I'm lying, to 200 millimetre fans. And with the uh, switch here, you don't necessarily have to have ARGB on your motherboard, as you'll find out in a bit. You can change colours. But as I go through, see that's pulsing, pulsing. If you want to go into single colour, they're always pulsing. You can't have it on static. And then it goes back to ARGB. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, anyway, so two 200 millimetre fans. Uh, <laughs> here's one for you. They're static at 800 RPM. They're only three pin. If you want them to uh, be adjustable, then you have to go into the BIOS, turn your motherboard onto DC, which is um, direct current mode, and you can turn them down to 400, mm, uh, 400 RPM. Um, but in reality, I don't think you need to. Uh, but remember I've said static 800 RPM. Uh, Asus AI Suite, which is what I use to do the, f because I'm using an Asus board to test, and we always use the same kit, and we always test them the same way. Uh, but the Asus board literally just picks them up as 800 RPM, and you can't change them. Uh, I'm just going to put the Corsair Grey panel back on the top. Now, oh, I'm going to have to turn it off because there we go. I need to unplug it. So we have a side panel, full length, which I'll add with the grey edge in, which I kind of like. Uh, but when we go around the back, you'll see, we come around here, that the back panel isn't full length. Now this bit of the top is for radiator and it allows them to have that extra offset section up here as well. So this all kind of works kind of nicely. So when you look at it from the back, it's a bit disjointed, but there's a reason for it and I like it. I can live with it. When you do go around the back, there is up here a fern hub. Now this is all rather good. This is all rather nice. And when we zoom in to said fan hub, it also does ARGB. So you can span out all of those fans, which is uh, two, three, four, five in total. I had to count. And I'm going back to check as well. One, two, three, four in total. I do apologize. And then there's the spare ARGB in the bottom. Uh, what you can do, is run all your fans off of this. So the, the fan that's in the back, this 120 millimeter one, is ARGB. 
bring it across, plug it into your hub. The front fans are already plugged in there. It's wired in. And it did wonder, it did make me wonder, like I said, the rear fan, sorry, I did forgot that we were zoomed in. Rear fan, ARGB, it wasn't wired in. I didn't realise why. So I wired it in. But then when I started using it, I worked out why it's not ARGB. And that is because these fans are 800 RPM. This one in the back goes from 600 RPM up to 1800 RPM. But when you plug it into the hub and plug it into the motherboard like you're meant to, then the software basically only really sees these static fans and then that one then basically runs at 800 RPM as well. So I've had to take that fan off of the hub and plug it into the motherboard and run it separately. Uh, so I thought that was a bit strange where you've got this hub but it ends up being completely limiting because of what's already plugged into it. Very strange. Anyway, lots of cable mounts around the back. Lots of tie downs, it's all nice. Grommets here, yes, lovely grommets, no, there. Bit weird, when we get around the other side it gets a bit weirder. Lovely big open section for the uh, back plate though. So plenty of access there for you to be able to put your uh, coolers and stuff on, brilliant. Got mounts here for um, 2.5 inch solid state drives as well. Uh, and they have little fittings on them so you actually push them in over the grommet so you don't have to worry about accessing them from the rear. It's actually quite nice, this bit. I like it. It's good. Um, the cables go straight up through the back uh, and it's on like a little bit of a ledge as well. So if I was to drop down and show you, you'll see the ledge and it's actually kind of nice. And yes, I could have done this all super slick, but in reality... We're there anyway. When we come round to this side, I'm going to need to raise you back up. But you can see the ledge from the other side. And that actually worked kind of well. It's like I meant to do that. I didn't. Um, anyway, so nice. Oh, nice view of the case. Nice view of the office as well. Uh, we can see from up here the way that I removed the panel. It's actually nice and slick, nice and easy. It's all good. Now... What we can also see while we're down at this angle is the hard drive mount. And you can take this off, but the hard drive mount then it kind of features this, which is adjustable and is should be good for airflow. With the blower fan that I use on this graphics card, I'm going to tell you now, it didn't make a great deal of difference, if I'm completely honest. We, we saw better results with the CPU tests in this case than the graphics card tests. And I went through and I tried different uh, ways to feed it with air. And in the end, the best way for this was 45 degrees. To give it a bit of blow. But like I said, I got a blower and it didn't really make a huge amount of difference. And by a blower fan, I mean the fan's here and it blows out the back. Uh, so yeah, but where we test all the same way, we don't change it to suit the case. It's just the way it is. The plastic cover here can be removed if you want. Now, you can see the grommets down the side of the motherboard up here, and then you've got this cover for the other grommets, which is only really gonna be any good if you've got an XL ATX motherboard. I don't really understand it. And I also think that then the gap here, again, doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's just a bit like, I, I get the fact that you could put a radiator in there, but it's just all a bit like, I don't know if I'm completely honest. Just, it doesn't kind of fit. It's like, it's a half assed kind of, feels like they've tried to do too much and in the end they've ended up doing most of it not that greatly because these 200 millimeter fans as well, if I zoom you in and show you, like the mounts around the outside, in fact, I'm going to take the front panel off so that we can get a better look. And I know you're zoomed in now, which is why I'm going to try and do this nice and quickly. Normally, I just rip the front panel off, but... So, okay, right. Herein lies my issue. 
The 200mm fans, which are quite clearly a huge part of the design and the aesthetic of this case, they've pretty much covered the edges up. Because the case is pretty much there and been designed around 120mm or 140mm fans. So you've lost probably a third of the airflow all the way down the side of the uh, fans. You've cut off a bit of the bottom, you've cut off a bit of the top of that one. It's just, it, it, it genuinely is like they just nailed two fans on the front. And I don't think it particularly works because why would you buy this and then take it all apart and put different fans and stuff in it. It just costs you a fortune. It's just, you just wouldn't do it. You'd buy one of the other cases instead. Um, and then all the leftover space and stuff, it's just, it's really been bothering me if I'm completely honest. And I think after everything with this case, with those big fans, if they'd have really wanted to give you the options for the 120 and the 140s, they could have added in brackets that you could clip in but you could have just left yourself with a massive amount of airflow for these 200s to have been able to float better and probably quieter as well so i'm going to put the plastic front panel back on which i'm going to tell you now you're going to see this case again with a different front panel and different fans and they'll call it something different um, so this doesn't particularly work that well in the thing and you'll see when the graphs are popping up and everything as well but what annoyed me most about this fan is it's there it's very visible they've made a really big deal out of it putting it on top of a 3.5 inch mount and plonking it right in the middle of the case like a case from i don't know like seeing this so very open and everything i haven't seen a case like this for quite a few years and it does make it instantly feel dated to me but this isn't ARGB either. Now, I'm not saying that we're all that worried about it, but the fact that those two are, and that one is, and this is the same sort of fan, it's just not, you know, it's not got any lighting or anything on it. It's like, well, why? Why, why is it so different? Um, and again, it bothers me because it is so different. Uh, but otherwise, nice 60 mil of room in the roof. You can add loads of stuff to it, uh, but yes hmm. i'm not sure so i've been popping the graphs up cpu results did all right um pleasant uh the 800 rpm fans in the front nice and quiet not got a problem with them was a bit more miffed that when i said to them about that they can't be adjusted they were like oh but you've got to do this and they clearly hadn't plugged everything in together because if they had plugged everything in together they'd know that the softwares will just override it and you're just going to get limited by the uh, fans. Now, I did try testing the, the hub in the CPU fan and in one of the other fan headers, like one of the system fan headers. And with AI Suite, it didn't make any difference. Um, so uh, also, once you start turning the other fans up independently, the, the, it does get a bit noisy, if I'm honest. Cooler Master fans aren't necessarily the quietest things in the world. I personally think the configuration of this, because I test at 600 RPM, 1000 RPM, and then um, uh, a max speed. And in reality, I had to test this with the front fans at 800. And then I could only change the fan speeds of the internal ones. So the internal ones were 600, 1000, and then uh, max, which is 1800. And like I said, it did okay, but the GPU didn't pan out as well as I was expecting it to, if I'm completely honest. So that was kind of a mute point in reality. And yeah, there, there just wasn't a lot in it. I did mess around with it quite a lot. I even tried turning it off and it, it genuinely didn't make that much difference. So it's more of a, oh, that's gonna do massive things for my graphics cards. Um, but then if you test it properly, it doesn't. Well, not this one anyway, but anyway. So. If I'm completely honest, I'm actually a bit disappointed because I'm very invested in the half. I have used uh, the last two halves and I also really liked the Trooper as well. And this is probably one of the first ones that I've had that I've not then instantaneously thought to myself, I want to put it on my desk. What I want to do with this is take it apart, take the fans out, take this cage out, take this um, cover off. It, it, it then makes me want to go and do loads of things to it. 
and I think for £140 they could have done a slightly better job or given you a few more options. They could definitely have tested this because they clearly haven't or I don't really see the point in putting the limiting fans onto it because in reality they could have just been powered off of a straight Molex and you wouldn't have known any better and you could have put the other fans on them. They are three pin as well, not PWM, which is another thing that kind of annoyed me in fact that it just it felt a bit dated and I think that's my overwhelming thought about this case is it feels like it's a bit old and not a new design. It's only really the glass side panel that makes you think that it has any place in a modern system build. So sadly, Cooler Master, I actually don't like it and that's really not um, how I normally am with your cases. And this one's just kind of left me feeling a bit disappointed. And the only nice thing that I have to say about it is it was quite quiet at 600 RPM. And if you were to set all the fat, sorry, these to 600 RPM, leave the front to 800 RPM, you can't really do a lot about it. And then you can have quite a nice, quiet system. Um, but I don't think, other than the front and that angular front, I don't really think it's very much of a half, which is quite a sad thing in reality. Um, oh, I didn't mention the teeny tiny power supply mesh cover, because you can't turn the power supply either way on this one. Not that it really matters, but look at that, it's tiny. I've had bigger sandwiches. Um, and my power supply fan is much bigger than that. Yeah. So, yeah, if you bought it, yeah, okay. No, no, this is actually a very good point. If I bought it, I wouldn't tell you that you've made a mistake. But if you ask me if you should buy it, I'm going to say no. That's a really good way to close out. Shocker.